Welcome to Trash Imagination, a podcast about reimagining trash. I'm Carla Brown. In today's episode, we'll talk about creative reuse of dried paint, graffiti, paint brushes, paint palettes, and paint cans. Did you know that acrylic paint is made from plastic? Most people use acrylic or latex paint instead of oil paint because we don't have to use smelly chemicals to clean up. But the huge downside of this type of paint is that it is basically liquid plastic. So we are effectively washing plastic down the drain when we clean up. With that in mind, today I'll talk about artists who creatively reuse paint and the tools that we use for painting. I first started thinking about the impact of this type of paint on our waterways when listening to the podcast Practically Zero Waste, episode 80. Teresa Godin shared how she minimizes the impact of her painting hobby. She researched to find paint that was not plastic-based, and she found a brand called Natural Earth Paint. They sell the pigments in a powdered form. You mix it depending on what type of paint that you want to use, whether that's acrylic, oil, watercolor, or other types. They also sell eco-friendly face paint, glitter, paint thinners, and varnishes. So that is a great option if you want to avoid putting more plastic into the environment when making your art. But Teresa had a bunch of plastic-based paint that she wanted to use up, so she researched how to address her painting wastewater. If she pours her paint-filled water down the drain, the dissolved paint goes with it. So instead, she made a container filled with sand, and she poured her wastewater there. The water evaporates, and her plastic waste is contained in that box rather than polluting the water in the wider world. By using the same box for many years, she reduces the potential reach of her paint waste. You can hear her explanation for her sandbox water filtration project starting at around the 42-minute mark in that podcast episode. Now, it's one thing to clean out a paintbrush, and it's another thing to pour a whole bucket of paint down the drain. So there is a popular craft right now called paint pouring, where you sequentially pour cups of acrylic paint on a canvas. As each color hits the canvas, it pushes the other one further out, making designs that look like a nebula or some other fluid abstract space. And it's really fun to watch these paintings being made. However, what makes me nervous is imagining a lot of paint sliding off the canvas and getting washed down the drain. Now, I assume most of these artists find a use for the paint that is coming off the canvas, but I'm not sure because the extra paint from these paint pouring projects is many colors mixed together. Now, I learned that some artists take that swirly paint and they make something called acrylic paint skins. This involves pouring swirled up paint on plastic sheets. You let it dry and then you peel it off like a piece of colorful, translucent, swirly skin. If you want inspiration for how this might become part of a larger piece of art, you can check out the work of Sana Hong. I heard an interview with Sana on the podcast, The Jealous Curator, in episode 150 from November 2018. At around the 43-minute mark, Sana talks about how she started using acrylic skins in her paintings. So when she used to make more dimensional paintings, she would apply paint to a canvas with a palette knife. But then she had situations where she didn't like the result, and she wanted to do another approach, but this was challenging. She tells a story about how she was in her studio, struggling to get started on a piece, and I think we've all been there when you're procrastinating. Suddenly you do really odd organizational tasks, when you suddenly really need to clean up your studio. So she decided to see how big of a piece of dried old paint could she peel from one of her painter's palettes. 
And when she pulled off these paint skins, she saw all kinds of color combinations that she probably would never have chosen otherwise. And she started incorporating them into her paintings. And those imaginative landscapes have become part of Sana's trademark because now she is actually an Emmy Award winning animator and she specializes in painting the backgrounds in cartoons. The next artist who works with paint skins is Jen Noon. She is an art professor at Northern Virginia Community College right here in my county. Jen uses latex paint, which is similar to acrylic in that it contains plastic, but it is less expensive and it is generally used to paint inside your home. So Jen specifically uses the latex paint that people return to hardware or paint stores. Sometimes this is called oops paint which is in a way a type of creative reuse in that she is likely diverting paint that might end up in landfill. To make her work, she repeatedly paints flat surfaces like glass sheets with this latex paint. She then scrapes it off in strips, which she describes as ripping the paint into sculptural ribbons. Sometimes the pieces are flat on the wall and the paint ribbons hang down or sometimes they are on boxes. By painting on glass, she can have one effect on one side of the glass, and then the paint on the other side of the glass can also show through. A lot of Jen's work is about beauty and how there is a contrast between what goes into something versus what you see, which is a great metaphor for creative reuse. We know there is so much waste behind the materials we use, but we aim to make something beautiful. The next artist, Shelley Heffler, combines acrylic paint with paper, and then she crumples the paper so that it dries in a three-dimensional way. She is using the plastics in the paint to make the paper behave like plastics. Often, the paper that she uses are creatively reused maps. Shelley also weaves painted paper and recycled vinyl billboards. And you know how much I love weaving non-traditional materials. Another artist who works with dry paint is Amanda Rusty Berkman. She did a portrait of Greta Thunberg and Jane Goodall, and she calls her style paint chip mosaics, where she scrapes off chips of paint from the easel. So unlike Sana Hong, who does huge pieces of paint, she uses little chips and then she uses them like mosaic stones. If you would like to try making mosaics with paint chips, I'm going to share a TikTok post by Tiana Lee, which shows how she does it, and she explains how she carefully removes bits of dried acrylic paint from her palette and makes a mosaic painting with it. You can also creatively reuse chunks of graffiti that fall off a wall. This is likely to happen because the layers of paint get heavy and the art is exposed to the weather or because people paint on surfaces that are already falling apart. In Detroit, there is an organization called Rebel Nell, started by Amy Peterson and Diana Russell in 2013. They gather the graffiti that has fallen on the ground around Detroit. They hire women who were formerly homeless or who were in difficult situations and train them on how to make jewelry by sanding and carving graffiti slabs. The resulting jewelry has all these tiny layers and swirls of color. They have done limited edition collections where they get an opportunity to gather graffiti from inside specific locations. For example, they were part of a huge project related to the Michigan Central train station. This historic station was opened in 1914 and closed in 1988. After that, graffiti artists got in there and they painted a lot of graffiti on the walls. And in 2018, Ford purchased the building with the goal of refurbishing it. But before they tackled that huge job, they invited Rebel Nell to come into the space and harvest graffiti to make into jewelry. This is a creative reuse project within a creative reuse project. It's like a creative reuse turducken. Another artist who works with graffiti is Karina Shostari, who lives near Munich, Germany. She makes very surreal jewelry and face masks. 
the way she uses graffiti is that she uses very tiny pieces, which she calls scales, and she attaches them to other objects. The result is an item that looks like it has very colorful reptile scales on it. One of her techniques is to put bioplastic made from corn and rice starches in a 3D pen. She then traces other objects that are underneath a piece of glass. And once she has made her copy, she can heat it up again and shape it into jewelry or masks to which she can apply things like her graffiti scales. Another type of jewelry made from layers of paint is called Fordite. It is also called Detroit Agate or Motor City Agate. In Ford factories, the cars were on tracks as they were being painted. And of course, they used to be painted by hand, but now they are painted by robots. And the extra paint would fall on the ground in layers. The painters noticed this material and they started chipping it off the tracks, bringing it home and grinding it down to make into jewelry. There is a website called Fordite.com where you can learn all about this material. Many artists continue to work with this material even today. The hashtag Fordite has almost 20,000 posts on Instagram. So now let's talk about creative reuse of spray cans. We just talked about graffiti, which causes the creation of lots of spray cans. Now, in most places, there are household hazardous waste depots where you must bring your spray cans for processing. Unless the cans are completely empty, they are under pressure. There is something inside the can called a propellant, which causes the paint to spray when you press the button. So I'm generally not going to recommend many home projects that involve creative reuse of spray paint cans because it does take some special training and safety procedures to do this safely. However, there are artists who have figured this out, and I'm going to talk about one of some of the works that they do. Can Love is an artistic collaboration started by artists DJ Neff and Paul Ramirez in Los Angeles. They have already creatively reused 25,000 spray paint cans. One place where they collect cans is the Venice Art Walls, which is a legal place for graffiti artists. There are special containers there where artists can put their empty spray paint cans for Can Love. So Can Love, when they get the cans, they disassemble them by using up all the paint in the can if it's not empty, and that releases the propellant, and then they carefully cut off the tops and bottoms, and they use the tube portion of the cans either as a tube or by unrolling it to make a flat rectangular piece of metal. Sometimes they make something called spray bouquets. If you look at the top part of a spray paint can, separated from the can, it looks somewhat like a rose. And then they use the tube part of the spray paint can as a vase. These spray bouquets have a really fun industrial appeal. They also make more delicate looking flowers like lilies, where the actuator buttons, those are the little buttons that you press to make the paint come out, those form the center, very delicate parts of the flowers. And they use the tube part of the can and they cut it into petals. In another project, they took the tube part of the can and they unrolled it to make flat rectangles of metal. They put those rectangles together into something that they called canscapes, which look something like a metal quilt where you place different colors of geometric shapes together. In Taiwan, they made a huge mural from the bottom of the cans, which are metallic circles. They drilled holes in the circles so they could be connected with wire in patterns. In that project, they laid out the circles in shiny, colorful diamond shapes and then attached them to a wall. You can support their work by purchasing some of these items on their website. On Vimeo, you can see how they disassemble the spray paint cans and reassemble the components into their sculptures. Another artist who creatively reuses spray paint cans is Mr. Mars. He specializes in making art about popular superheroes or cartoon characters. He calls his sculptures customized toys, which involves taking an existing toy and then combining it with other materials to make a sculpture. One type of sculpture that he makes involves 
it making a toy looking like it's exploding out from inside of a spray paint can, and he calls that style his bombers. This involves cutting, melting, and painting both the can and the toys to get the appearance that he wants. Each bomber currently sells for $400. Mr. Mars was a graffiti artist before this, and he got into this type of art in 2013 when he was working in childcare, and he started making items for the children he was caring for. Next, let's talk about how artists creatively reuse old, dried-out paintbrushes. When I was growing up, my mom was a painter, and one skill that she taught me was how to carefully wash my brushes to prolong their life. But inevitably, brushes do get to the point where they are really no use, especially the wider paintbrushes that you use for painting houses. Some artists make altered paintbrushes, which involves decorating or painting the paintbrush so itself it becomes a piece of art. In 2012, Donna Downey hosted something that she called the Altered Brush Project, where she encouraged artists to share photos of their altered paintbrushes. And people altered their brushes by adding objects like ribbon or antique photos, as well as inspirational quotes. Typically, they would display the brushes on the wall with a nail through the hole in the handle so that the bristles are facing down. Many artists painted the brushes to make them look like a face, and in particular, they painted them to look like Santa Claus, where the beard was made from the bristles of the brush. Cassie Stevens has a great tutorial where she shows how to make cute bearded faces from old paintbrushes. She shows how to make the eyes and nose and mouth of the faces with polymer clay. By putting the clay on the metal part of the brush before she bakes them, they were more likely to stick. Another artist who makes old paintbrushes into faces is Sabine Tim. She makes a lot of fun sculptures from everyday objects. This is a style of art that I really enjoy in that these artists are finding humor in everyday objects. I mean, if you've ever stuck googly eyes on any random object, you know what I'm going for here. And I've mentioned this style of art when I talked about the work of Gilbert Legrand, who I mentioned in my episode on the creative reuse of medical supplies. Carrie Bloomston had a great idea, which was to display a series of paintbrushes, each painted a different color of the rainbow along a wall. It looks super cheerful, but sadly she calls it her paintbrush graveyard. In truth, though, it would be a lovely way to add color to any room. Next, I want to talk about plastic paint palettes. Often these come with a series of tiny ovals of paint in each color. Sometimes they are hard plastic and sometimes they are flexible. One year when I was teaching art at my kids' school, I asked the art program at the end of the school year if I could take the very decrepit-looking palettes home rather than having them go into the trash. Most of the paint colors had been used up or were very messy where kids had dipped in a dirty brush. So I popped off all those little scraps of paint and I sorted them by color in small glass jars. But then I was left with about 50 plastic palettes. So I rinsed them off and I've been thinking about it for a couple of years of how I could reuse them. And unfortunately, I have not found a use. But the great news is this week, I learned about a project by someone in my town in that she is collecting paint palettes for a TerraCycle program with BIC. So I'm going to bring them to her in two weeks, and then her charity will get a donation for each palette that I salvaged. And that makes me feel really happy. The only other item I have seen for paint palettes is that I saw someone made very silly sandals from the flexible paint palettes. And I will link to that photo in the show notes. It's just for fun. It, you would never actually make these sandals, but it's they're very cute. Our last topic is creative reuse of empty paint cans. So hopefully you know that if you have plastic-based paint cans, you can let them dry up all the way, then you just hammer on the lid and you can bring them to the landfill. Whereas paints that contain chemicals need to go to the hazardous waste depot. Pillar Box Blue painted the insides of some of her empty paint cans a nice bright color, and then she decorated the outside of the cans with paint color chips, and then she used them for storage. 
Other crafters reuse paint cans by covering them with twine or mosaic rocks. But if you Google this, you'll see that most crafts marketed as creative reuse of paint cans involve using brand new cans. They are not creatively reusing old empty cans because they're usually pretty nasty and covered with paint drips. So thank you for listening. Of course, I linked to most of these ideas on a Pinterest board for you. I actually made one for dried paint and graffiti ideas and then a separate one for the paintbrush ideas. Let me know if you have ever made art from these items at trashmagination at gmail.com. Until next time, may you see all those dried out painting items as a source of art in your life. (laughs) 